What is going on? Welcome back to Ship Built. In this episode, we're continuing on with the coils. Today is the day. These boxes have been sitting up on the shelf just waiting, staring, teasing. What we have laid out here is all from PSR or Performance Suspension Racing. None of it is sponsored, it's just good quality, fairly priced Aussie made components. A lot of what we have here is for the rear diff, although we do have a couple of other bits and pieces. What we're gonna do is just tackle this box by box, job by job. But the first thing I need to do is just remove the rear diff, get it back up on the table and then stop being lazy and remove all the paint. So that way we have a nice clean slate ready for everything to be welded in. Alright, so as you can see, I've gone ahead and removed as much of the paint as I can because I need to start taking a look at the shock mounts. Now, as you can see here from factory, they're in a stupid location. They get bent, banged, hung up on everything because they hang lower than the diff housing. So these are the first point of contact. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this and that's where our PSR high clearance shock mounts come into play. Uh, these are the 80 millimeter version, part number 075. So, to get these on, uh, if I was smarter, I would have taken a look at these earlier because at our current configuration, our shocks are basically maxed out now at ride height, meaning we'll have hardly any down travel, meaning we get no flex, no good, we don't want that. We have 300 mil of travel in our current shocks. So what I'm gonna do, again, I'm no expert, but I'm gonna split the difference, go 150 mil up and down travel. But to get 150 mil, in our shock location, it basically ends up right here underneath our bump stop, which is no big deal, but it just means I have to go ahead and cut off our bump stops, weld these in first so I can get weld up on the top there, and then I can go ahead and get the bump stop welded back in. I'm not gonna bore you with cutting and grinding off the factory bracket again, because you've seen me do it a million times before, but I have removed the factory bracket, ground it all down, got some weld through primer on there, and then I've taken a look at the new PSR shock mount. So you can see there on that little corner, I've just had to notch that, and I've also added a bevel onto each corner, just get the fitment a bit tighter. Now if you have a look here, you can see it fits over the weld, and we have a nice tight gap all the way around. Everything's level, plumb, so what I'm gonna do now is just tack it, and then I'll go ahead and cut off the bump stop and then we'll use the new shock mount for a reference point for when we get the bump stop welder back on. Let's get it.
right, we've now got our new shock mount sorted. I'm really happy with the way that they came out and how they're operating. It was a really simple, effective mod for any of you patrol owners as well. So sticking with fixing Nissan's factory mistakes, we're gonna take a look at our coil hats again. These coil towers are extremely prone to bending and snapping under a bit of weight. So what we're gonna to do to prevent that is this rear weld-in coil tower brace, and it is a beefy bit of gear. Six millimeter mild steel, all CNC bent, but of course it's for a patrol, so it's not gonna fit. We're gonna to have to do a lot of cutting and shaping to get it in there nice and tight. And what I'm hoping for is to get this bottom lip to sit nice and tight along this cross member so I can get a nice beefy weld all the way across, giving us a lot more strength. Wow, what a blowout. This thing has given me some drummers. So as you saw, we were fouling on the coil hats because the Troopy chassis is a lot skinnier. So it wanted to be out here more, meaning that it fouled on the coil hats. So I notched that, plated it, that sorted all in the bid to try and not and cut it in half and shorten it. But I ended up having to do that anyway because these holes here wouldn't line up with the coil hats, meaning we couldn't get a nice weld all the way on the inside. So I ended up taking 60 mil out of the center, re-welding it together, fish plating it, now it's solid and everything finally fits. So what I need to do now is just take the top of these welds off to get it sitting nice and flat. Then I'm gonna clean everything up, get some weld through primer on there and then we can move on to something different.
All right, so the coil towel brace is finally finished and I'm so glad to get that off the job list because that sucked. And what you just watched me do then was get everything welded out completely. So we've got our shock mounts, bump stops and coil hats all welded in there solidly hopefully not going anywhere. So we can now move on to something else. What we have here is a full diff brace kit and it is basically junk. Because we've modified the housing so much, none of it fits anymore. The only thing we're gonna be using is the pumpkin cover and the drain bung. Those side wings there, none of it fits because of the new shock mounts. So I've got some 75 by 75 five mil RHS that I'm gonna be cutting up and making some new wings out of. All right, and that is it for another episode. Now, I know I say it every single time, but I am stoked with the way it turned out. It almost looks like it's gonna work. Unfortunately, we ran out of time, so stick around for next episode when we get stuck into another few bits and pieces. So until then, like, subscribe if you haven't already, you know the deal, and I will see you next time. Cheers for watching.